Welcome to this video presentation on the mortgage servicing rules. In this video, we'll discuss the mortgage servicing requirements that apply only to large servicers due to the specific exemptions for small servicers. This video contains a high-level discussion to help make you aware of these requirements in the event your bank no longer qualifies as a small servicer and must comply with these additional servicing requirements. This video will not discuss servicing requirements applicable to both small and large servicers. We will discuss periodic statement requirements in Regulation Z, which do not apply to small servicers. This video also highlights Regulation X requirements that provide small servicer exemptions, which are the general servicing policies and procedures and some of the loss mitigation rules. Additionally, we will discuss the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, or the FDCPA, in connection with the requirements for periodic statements and early intervention with delinquent borrowers. Regulation Z uses the term consumer, and Regulation X uses the term borrower. For ease, we will use these terms interchangeably throughout this video presentation. Throughout this video, the term day refers to calendar days unless otherwise specified. Let's begin our discussion with requirements for periodic statements. Unless exempt, Regulation Z requires servicers to send borrowers a periodic statement each billing cycle, listing for the applicable time periods, the amount due, an explanation of amount due, a breakdown of previous payments, transaction activity since the last statement, and where applicable information regarding delinquency, among other things. Periodic statements provide consumers with necessary information in a comprehensive and understandable way so that they may better understand their obligations and avoid unnecessary delinquencies or other issues. This requirement applies in closed and consumer credit transactions secured by a dwelling. Appendix H30 to Regulation Z provides sample forms servicers may use. The periodic statement requirement generally does not apply to fixed rate loans if the servicer provides a coupon book provided that certain criteria are met. Servicers do not need to send periodic statements for the following exempt transactions. Reverse mortgages, timeshare plan loans, fixed rate loans when a coupon book containing specific information is provided, loans serviced by small servicers, Charged off loans provided there are no additional fees or interest charged on the account, and in certain circumstances, loans while the borrower is a debtor in bankruptcy. Large servicers must continue to send periodic statements even when the borrower is delinquent or if the servicer is a debt collector under the FDCPA to whom the borrower has sent a written cease communication request. Servicers may be exempt from some of the periodic statement requirements while the borrower is a debtor in bankruptcy or if the borrower discharges personal liability for the mortgage debt or certain other conditions are met. However, large servicers may have to provide modified periodic statements or coupon books to these consumers. The rules and CFPB resources describe when to provide modified and unmodified periodic statements or coupon books. Large servicers must comply with the Regulation X requirements to maintain general servicing policies and procedures in writing, which are reasonably designed to achieve the following objectives. Access and provide timely and accurate information. Properly evaluate loss mitigation applications. Facilitate oversight of and compliance by service providers. Facilitate prompt transfer of information during servicing transfers, and inform borrowers of the written error resolution and information request procedures. The rules also set standards for record retention and servicing file creation by large servicers. A large servicer may determine the specific policies, procedures, and methods in light of the size, nature, and scope of its operations, the credit quality of serviced mortgage loans, and its history of borrower complaints. Although small servicers are not required to maintain the general servicing policies and procedures in writing, 
there may be requirements related to these objectives that apply to small servicers. For example, small servicers are not exempt from the error resolution and information request requirements in Regulation X. Regulation X contains early intervention, continuity of contact, and loss mitigation requirements that apply only to large servicers. The early intervention rule requires large servicers to try to contact borrowers within specified timeframes after delinquency. Large servicers are also required to maintain continuity of contact with delinquent borrowers. In addition, large servicers must take specific procedural steps to help borrowers who submit loss mitigation applications to retain their homes through loan modification or other options. We will discuss each of these sections of the rule, starting with early intervention. Under the early intervention requirement, large servicers must establish, or make good faith efforts to establish, live contact with borrowers by the 36th day of delinquency, and, if appropriate to a borrower's situation, promptly inform the delinquent borrower of loss mitigation options that may be available. Large servicers are also required to provide delinquent borrowers with written information about any available loss mitigation options by the 45th day of delinquency. Large servicers may use the model language from the appendix to Regulation X in the written notice. Additional information regarding early intervention and delinquency is available in Regulation X and on the CFPB's website. Partial exemptions from early intervention, live contact, and written notice requirements may apply when any borrower on the mortgage loan is a debtor in bankruptcy or invokes the cease communication protections under the FDCPA. Special content and timing requirements apply in certain circumstances. Speaking of the FDCPA, now is a good time to note that there are certain FDCPA safe harbors for servicers communicating with borrowers, which may be useful for you to be aware of as you work with borrowers who are struggling to pay their mortgage. The rules require servicers to provide certain servicing disclosures even after a borrower has invoked the cease communication protection under the FDCPA, including periodic statements, as mentioned earlier, as well as various other notice requirements as described in the rules. In 2016, the CFPB issued an interpretive rule providing safe harbors from liability under the FDCPA in the following three situations. 1. Providing an early intervention modified written notice to a borrower who has invoked the cease communication protection under the FDCPA. 2. Responding to borrower-initiated communications concerning loss mitigation after the borrower has invoked the cease communication protection under the FDCPA. And three, communicating about a mortgage loan with a confirmed successor in interest in compliance with specified mortgage servicing rules in Regulation X or Z. We are not going to discuss successors in interest in this video but you can check the rules and CFPB resources for more information. Note that not all servicers are subject to the FDCPA, so you may want to check to find out whether you have any compliance obligation as a debt collector under the FDCPA. In addition, even if a servicer would normally be exempt from FDCPA, conduct that would otherwise violate the FDCPA may be a violation of Section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. Let's get back to discussing Regulation X requirements for large servicers related to working with borrowers during loss mitigation. The continuity of contact rules require large servicers to maintain policies and procedures to assign personnel to a delinquent borrower for various purposes, including responding to the borrower's inquiries, assisting with available loss mitigation options, and performing other specified functions. Large servicers may decide to assign a single person or a team of personnel to maintain continuity of contact, including, for example, personnel with specialized knowledge in bankruptcy law to assist borrowers who file for bankruptcy. 
The continuity of contact requirements are intended to make sure that borrowers receive consistent and accurate information while they are working through loss mitigation. These requirements enable borrowers to discuss their mortgage options with trained personnel who are familiar with their situation. Large servicers are required to work with borrowers applying for available loss mitigation options. Regulation X requires certain procedures to evaluate borrower applications and send certain notices to borrowers. The rules do not require servicers or owners of mortgage loans to offer any specific loss mitigation options and do not mandate eligibility criteria for those options. There is a small servicer exemption from most of the loss mitigation procedures. However, both small and large servicers are prohibited from initiating foreclosure referrals or moving for or conducting foreclosure sales while a borrower seeks loan modification or other loss mitigation options. Further, large servicers are responsible for violations caused by a foreclosure counsel's action or inaction. You can find more information relating to the loss mitigation rules in the regulations and official interpretations. We have come to the end of our video on mortgage servicing rules applicable only to large servicers. In this video, we talked about requirements for large servicers related to periodic statements and general servicing policies and procedures. We also discussed some of the loss mitigation requirements applicable to large servicers, as well as the interplay between the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and certain requirements of the mortgage servicing rules related to periodic statements and early intervention with delinquent borrowers. There are other loss mitigation requirements applicable to small servicers. Thank you for watching this video on the mortgage servicing rules. We hope you found it both useful and informative.